We are joined this morning by Eric Simmerod, Galton County Election Administrator, and Casey Hayes, the Election Manager. And uh, thanks again, you guys, for coming on the XL Morning Show today. we got the election coming up in just a couple of weeks, and voting way different this year. Can you explain to everybody how different it's going to be? Sure. Uh, so typically this would be a polling place election, and, uh, you know, with the governor's directive, uh, we're, we're conducting the election as a mail ballot election. Uh, but, but actually, it's not that different uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off is that we have uh, most of our voters already registered as absentee voters. And so uh, even if this was a polling place election, 85% of the voters in Gallatin County would be receiving their ballots in the mail anyway. Is that right? That's, that a, is, that's, typical, that's a typical year. That's a typical uh, uh, polling place election. And on top of that... Uh, you know, this is going to be the uh, third major election in a row that we have conducted as a mail ballot. Um, we did the, the fall municipal elections uh, as a countywide mail ballot because there was an is- a countywide issue on the ballot, and so that was uh, done by mail. And then, uh, you know, our typical uh, school and special district elections in May were conducted by mail, and uh, obviously the primary was also conducted by mail. And so uh, we're actually kind of in a groove. Uh, conducting the election this way. So you mentioned 85 percent of Gallatin County. How does that compare to the rest of the country? Uh, I don't know about the rest of the country, but for the rest of the state of Montana, uh, absenteeism is over 70 percent, somewhere hovering around 72 to 73 percent of of voters. Has it been that way for a long time, or is this like a, a new trend? So it's it's been increasing uh, over over a long period of time. Uh, we've been at these high figures in Gallatin County for a while. Um, but it's it's climbing uh, statewide as well, so yeah, it's it's, it's actually uh, we've been over fifty percent for I don't know uh, half a half a decade maybe maybe a decade I don't I don't know for sure on that but it's, Boy. it's actually been uh, pretty high. People like voting by mail. Uh, yeah, it is. It's certainly easier. So can you clear up any of the miscommunication? Uh, involving like fraud when it comes to basically really is are people getting ballots that shouldn't that aren't alive anymore they don't live where they used to live is that a problem um so yeah a couple couple answers to those questions uh people who are dead do not receive ballots uh, unless they have passed away since we received the last list from uh the state's department of health and human services for vital statistics as well as the county statistics uh, we do those for the county monthly. We do those for the state quarterly. Um, so that uh, we uh, maintain our lists as best we can with the information that we have. We reach out to voters um, through the NCOA process. In Gallatin County, because we have such a transient population, we uh, put our voter list up against the NCOA list every six months, and then we mail out notifications to folks who may have moved to see if we can get better address information. Um, Then uh, we also, as a result of these mail ballot elections, if we get a ballot returned to us as undeliverable, we have to send a notice to that voter. If that voter does not respond to that notice, they become inactive, and only active voters receive ballots in the mail for a a, uh, mail ballot election. Um, So there's sort of these uh, ingrained processes in mail ballot elections that keeps the lists clean. Um, Right now in Gallatin County, we have uh, about 3,300 undeliverable ballots from what we sent out last Friday. That is about half of what we've had in past elections. Now, Um, you're talking about ones that are returned to you, right? Exactly. Yep. They are returned undeliverable because ballots cannot be forwarded by federal law. Uh, If it does not... uh, if, the, if it goes to an address where there is an NCOA check, a hold, anything like that, it will come back to us. Also, if somebody says return to sender, cannot, uh, no longer lives at this address, it comes back to us as well. So there are these processes that are in statute that allow us to maintain our voter lists through these mailings. Uh, then we go an extra step in Gallatin County. Uh, we do the uh, uh, P.O. box check. So we got a lot of people say in Three Forks who have uh, no residential mail delivery, they all have a P.O. box. But 
In that particular area, we are straddled over two counties, Broadwater and Gallatin. And sometimes people will move over the line, but they'll retain that same P.O. box. So what we did before this election is anyone with a P.O. box mailing address in the county received a, a letter asking if the residence address we had on file was accurate. We had some updates to that so that we would uh, get people in the proper jurisdictions for voting. Now, we've had several listeners reach out that they've received, you know, uh, there is one that had five uh, ballots that came to his residence that don't live there anymore. Um, is there a concern of that happening across the county? Uh, you know, when people don't update their address with us, we still have to send that ballot. And we would ask that the voter uh, or the recipient of those, if they are not the voter, return those to our office. Now, we have checks in place with signature verification that if those ballots were to be voted and returned, they couldn't be counted if and unless we had verified the signature. Is that all done by computer? Like, how do you know, like, somebody, you know, multiple ballots came in for one person? Uh, okay, so... For example, you're going to get people who have been sent a ballot but did not want that ballot and came in in person to vote. The first ballot is voided. Uh, those signature envelopes have a barcode and an ID number on them, and that's specific to the database that issues out those ballots. The database has an account for each voter. It's one in, one out. So what we do in the case of what we call a reissue, a void and reissue, we void the first ballot's ID, it is in no way linked to the actual ballot that the voter is marking. It's linked to this uh, envelope that they sign. And then if that ballot has been voided because another has been reissued, it cannot be accepted by the system. Okay. Yeah, and also realize that this uh, system is a statewide system. And so if you were registered in Butte Silverbow and, uh, and had a ballot over there and then came here and registered and got a ballot, the original ballot would be voided and not, not uh, be able to be counted. Okay, now you're mentioning a statewide system. What if I moved states and I potentially had a ballot in another state, you know, maybe uh, California or Wyoming, and now I'm getting another ballot here? Does that ballot in another state, could that be voted on without being detected here? So we work with other states through the Secretary of State's office, um, through what's the National Voter Registration Act's requirements for uh, reporting interstate. Uh, so if, let's say, a voter registers from one state to another, uh, uh, California to Montana, when they register in Montana, uh, we on that application have a space where they need to declare where they had been previously registered. Then that information goes over to the other state, and they cancel their voter registration. We report that to the state. The state reports that to the other state. And then that other state reports it down to the local jurisdiction. So there's a little bit of lag in time, but ideally what you've got is communi cross-communication between jurisdictions that's getting those ballots, uh, voters' registration canceled in other states and ballots canceled in other states. There's also uh, a, a group out there. It's the Electronic Registration Information. Uh, I think it's a compact. It's run through the Pew Institute. There's over 30 states that are part of this uh, agreement that share and cross-check their um, voter registration databases with one another. Unfortunately, Montana is not yet a part of what we call ERIC, um, but we're hopeful that in this next legislative session that the uh, folks uh, who are elected will see that that is a valuable uh, asset that can help us better control our voter rolls. What keeps somebody, say like you live in a household, uh, that because a lot of people have roommates and things here, you know, there, maybe there's seven people in the house, so they, there's seven ballots that come in, uh, but one person, could one person fill those out for everybody? Maybe that, you know, the other people don't want to vote, they're not into politics, whatever. Is, is there a way to keep one person from filling out votes for somebody else? Right, yeah, it's the signature on the envelope. So what we have are uh, very robust libraries of voters' signatures. Every form that you've signed and submitted to our office, we have an exhibit of the signature that came with that. And that's what we use to compare the signature that's on file uh, with the signature that's on the envelope. It's a human process. Yeah, does that, that you don't have a computer that does that? No, that no seems... we, have, we, we have people. This is a people process. So in that process, what happens 
if uh, somebody should sign another person's ballot and it doesn't match the signature, the clerk who initially receives that would hit, uh, would reject that signature and send it on up the chain. It would then go to a supervisor who would evaluate it. If that supervisor agrees that it is uh, also uh, not a match, then the ballot is rejected. If, this, if the supervisor thinks that it is a match, then I, the manager, or Eric, the election administrator, is going to make the final determination. Once the ballot is in a rejected status, a notice is sent to the voter, and a call is made if we have the uh, uh, phone number on file. And then once we can make contact with the voter to let them know it's rejected, the voter would then be able to determine if, in fact, they had voted the ballot and then if they need to press charges or file a complaint. Is this the same process that's basically being used all across the country? Uh, I don't know about the country, but that's how it's used in Montana. Because it, sound, I mean, it sounds like, um, like it would take months to, to go through all of <laughs> And, uh, you know, our county's not very big. Think about a, like a big city like an L.A. or a you know, a Chicago, like, God, it seems like it would take forever to do all of that. Yeah, you know, we're thankful that we get to conduct the election right here in Gallatin County. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. Uh, Even though we're growing? (laughs) uh, So does that mean you guys will have, uh, are you guys doing this now as as votes come in, as ballots come in? Yes, we are. And uh, and the other other part of this is that, uh, um, you know, you can check on your ballot to see what the status of it is. If you go to my voter page, uh, for Montana, it's got a system where you just put in your name and date of birth, and it will bring up your voter record. And with that, uh, it'll tell you uh, what the status of your ballot is. And so this is a a really important tool for voters to know uh, what the status of their ballot is. Um, If if the ballot's been sent out and hasn't been received by our office yet, it's going to say Thunder Mail Ballot Tracking. And it'll say date ballot received. Uh, it'll say no. And uh, if it says no, it means we haven't received the ballot back at all. So you mentioned name and date of birth. Um, yep. Now, I have a Facebook. I can look up uh, thousands of people's birthdays as well as their legal name. Does that mean that I can check all of their uh, voter and see their ballots and see the progress yeah. of their ballot? Yeah, you could. Yeah, it's a public record. So the voter rolls are... Uh, open to the public for observation with the exception of any identification numbers. The date of birth has not been determined by the uh, Attorney General to be uh, uh, PII. Uh, So it's a vital statistic in their mind that uh, folks can use to determine the age of a voter, uh, should they choose. The limitation is that none of that can be used for commercial purposes. So, yeah, they You can go check on anybody's ballot status, but you can't do anything to their record. All it is is an observation. Yep. Hey, is it true that, uh, because I've seen this on Facebook, so I'd like to know if this is just a rumor or not, but people are saying that when you send your ballot in, on the outside, it says whether you're a Republican or a Democrat (laughs) that you can check? No. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, No, we don't file uh, or register in Montana under political parties because we have open primaries. So there's no requirement and no way for us to know what an individual's uh, political preference would be. Okay. Right. All right. Yep. Is there, you know, since we're talking about it, is there any other of those that are floating out there that you guys are like, oh, my God, again, like that you could clear up? Like that just- most of, I mean, yeah, if it doesn't come from an official election office or any official election um, uh, group, then you need to be skeptical of it. If it comes from a campaign or a political party, you need to be skeptical of it. If it comes from a friend, be skeptical of it. What we're asking people to do is contact our office with their questions. They can do them by email or phone. Um, We have very knowledgeable staff. You know, the beauty and the problem with elections is that it is so far in the weeds um, that there's so much nuance to it because there's a lot of allowances for it. Um, so, you know, there's, there, folks are right to be confused in a lot of ways, um, only because of all of the misinformation that's being put out. Yeah, and I, and I just wanted to finish talking about my voter page so that your listeners can, uh, when they go there, can know what, what they're looking at when they get it, because um, it, it's important stuff uh, for them. Um, the, other, the other options that you might see on there is, uh, under there is uh, Received. And that means the ballot's been scanned in, we've received it in the system, but it has not been examined yet for a signature. And then uh, after that would be accepted. 
If you see an accepted status, that means that it has gone through the signature verification process, and we have accepted that signature, and your ballot is going to be counted. And then the, the other option, obviously, is undeliverable, and that means uh, it went out, uh, hit, hit the post office, and they said, no, that address is no longer valid for that voter. It popped back to us. We've got it here in the office. You can come in and pick it up, uh, coming, coming to the, uh, the courthouse and, uh, and get that ballot to vote it. And another one is rejected. And if we've rejected it, it's, it's going to have something to do with the signature. Um, it could, and most likely is going to mean that you missed signing the ballot. Yep. That's, that's the, uh, by far the most common reason for uh, a rejection is that people just forget to sign their ballot when they mail it in. And so uh, we have, there's paperwork that you can uh, submit to us via email that will take care of that, or you can come into the office to, uh, to cure that process. Hey, uh, also, people can vote in person, right? That is correct. Our office is open uh, from 7.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. every single uh, business day and up and through the election. And then on Election Day, of course, it's 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. That, that's the hard deadline right there, 8 p.m. on Election Day. Uh, all ballots have to be in the various uh, places of deposit uh, or here in the, the county courthouse. So you don't, also, you don't have to wait until Election Day. You can literally vote today. We, we would strongly recommend, encourage, and ask that people not wait until Election Day. Uh, it is typical for all elections that voting begins 30 days prior. It's nothing new to this election. Um, in a polling place election, that's called in-person absentee. You are absent from your polling place on Election Day, but you're voting in person. For a mail ballot election, it is just simply in-person voting. Uh, we are expanding out to the fairgrounds on Election Day to hope to spread out the people and to accommodate uh, the lines. But, again, if you're waiting that long, uh, you've waited too long, um, and you will have to wait. Uh, when everyone decides to do the same thing at the same time, you're going to have a line. And despite the uh, best work of all of our clerks and our designs to get as many stations for registration and ballot issuing in place, um, when you have thousands of people show up all at once, no matter how many positions that you have, people are going to have to wait, and then that's going to create in a pandemic environment some real uh, safety and health concerns. So yeah. if, if we choose to fill out our ballot and we don't want to mail it back, we want to drop it off in person, uh, where are those options? Yeah, so we have a lot of options for that, um, and they expand on Election Day. Uh, but we, right now uh, we have places of deposit, obviously, here at the courthouse. And then uh, at the various uh, city clerk's offices uh, across the county, Belgrade, Manhattan, Three Forks, West Yellowstone, uh, and then at the Big Sky Water and Sewer District, because they are not a city, and, uh, and then also up at the ASMSU office uh, in the sub on campus. All right. Well, I hope all of the elections offices across the country are as on it as you guys appear to be, because, man, this is, it sounds like you've got it all buttoned down. This is awesome. Right, and, and just, uh, just to expand on that, uh, on Election Day, there's other places of deposit that are going to be what people would consider their normal polling places, uh, so uh, it'll uh, help alleviate some maybe confusion with the voters if their polling place isn't open. But, uh, so we do have several of those open. The Gallatin County Fairgrounds, Hope Lutheran, Belgrade Special Events, River Rock Community Center, Gallatin Gateway Community Center, Manhattan Christian uh, School, and uh, the Belgrade, or I'm sorry, the Bridger Canyon Fire Station. Those are all going to be places of deposit on Election Day, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And that's all on your the election site, right? Every, yep, and everything's on our, our webpage. Uh, you can go to gallatinvotes.com, and, uh, and it'll direct you there. Also, the instructions that come with every ballot contain on the back of it a list of those places of deposit. Um, Perfect. Yeah, so if, if people don't have to write the list, we already did it for them. You just have to turn your instructions over. All right. Hey, thanks for your time. It's Eric Simerod. He's the uh, Gauta County Election Administrator. Casey Hayes, the Election Manager. Seriously, thanks, you guys, uh, and I appreciate what you're doing. It sounds like you're on it, and uh, we thank you for that. Yeah, thank you so much for having us today.